Hi, this is David the Trader. It is May 31st. Thanks for joining me. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about the S&P 500. Um, a lot of people have been wondering today, uh, are we going higher or are we going lower? Technically speaking, we had an inside day. Uh, we traded uh, within uh, the range of Friday in between the prices of about... Um, I want to say 4.15.09 down to 4.12.38. Uh, the low being one of the prior pivots here back from uh, from Friday. What I was looking for today was kind of a similar action. I was expecting more of a gap down uh, scenario. We got that, uh, albeit it was you know, within that candle still, but we didn't know it was a clean gap. Open, back tested a little bit, failed, came down uh, within that first 15 minutes. And then a uh, little 15 minute correction. Uh, retested lows, re lows held. That was your long one off, off, the, off the retest. Uh, we get a little bit of a retrace. At that point, you can kind of expect it to retest this red bar high. Uh, test, test, failed. Uh, test lower, test lower, failed on the test lower. So it's like we were failing in both directions. Uh, so we kind of just resolved higher back into filling uh, the gap area. You can see as soon as we filled that gap, we failed um, on a breakout, came back down, failed to break down, came back up. And then we kind of had two pause candles. Uh, then it failed on the breakout again. Um, but then we uh, finally broke through uh which is i call this a pinocchio high so we kind of like poked the nose through a level um and then we kind of came back down and we closed albeit kind of weak uh, i was some selling pressure into the close but i mean it's not much more to make of an inside day um pretty much what i'm looking for going forward is for the market to um have vol volatile periods and the volatility i believe is here to stay uh give me one second here pull up my daily chart so as you can see here on the daily uh we had the bottom and tail come in last week that was also a gan level uh we can get into i'm gonna get into more of uh gan W.D. Gann was a famous trader from the early 1900s. He traded through in the Great Depression, amassed a wealth over $50 million. And he uses a uh, time and price uh, reverberation methodology. It uses like a square root calculator. Um, and it basically, you're able to kind of predict windows of when the market should be volatile or should have a pivot. Um, and if it does have a pivot, what level that pivot should come from. Uh, so you can see that we had a three-day uh, rally, basically, on a daily chart here. Uh, we got this low put in inside, inside. Well, actually, that was slightly outside, but you can you can call that an inside day. So we had an inside day. Inside day didn't break up. Uh, we kind of back tested, held lows, holding those lows. There was crucial for bulls and then we just had a kind of a relief rally now we're right back into horizontal angle well we, we are at horizontal resistance and we have angular resistance so i would expect more price action like this for it to keep continuing to come lower uh, i can give you a better example of what the angular resistance is on the futures I haven't seen a lot of traders online um, making a mockery of the GAN wheel. And it's funny that they would make a mockery of the one thing that I really believe that can make make you a lot of money. But um, yeah, you can bring a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. So as you can see here, this is the futures chart. We have um, 
you know, significant horizontal resistance. We got it up around 4,200. And then that coincides also with the angular resistance, which is coming off of these levels here. Um, let's see if we get any type of pattern here off these lows. Nah, sloppy. But sometimes you, you know, on a daily chart, you might be able to get you a, a nice channel that you're trading in, and it actually will work for a little while. You might be able to call this a channel. Um, it's kind of wedging in between. Well, I wouldn't even say wedging, but um, really, we got this decline, so you can use a, a what's called an Elliott wave count on this. Uh, so we're gonna do like major, like a major five. So we got one, two, three, four. Um, the fourth wave is generally a, like the, I believe the biggest wave, and then you get like a, what's called an A B C off of that. So here's, this is the four, and then your A B C, and then your five. So if we get the five in this wave count is correct uh we're projecting below 3700 on the s p so keep that in mind for this you know psychologically if we do start breaking down 3700 definitely could be in play especially if we break these lows um around 3807 on the on the es futures one second here i'm just going to talk about some stocks talk about AMD I was in this on Thursday of last week I bought calls uh, I bought 94s 96s and 97s I honestly didn't even think they were gonna hit because I bought them for I bought them for uh, for Friday monster trade um, but basically I'll give you what my setup was so we had basically AMD has been battling around 100 bucks all year right so I mean at least not since April April Fools has been pretty much lying in the sand has been 100 bucks I got that in the back of my mind I see the double bottom here I don't trade inside of here I wait for the retracement we got a nice day here but I didn't want it that day because I felt that uh, the market was in was in really given if you had traded during the day instead of looking at it at, on a daily channel a daily chart you would have saw that the market wasn't really given like the signal to really go long so but when i really did get the signal to go long was on thursday i held uh the next morning uh i think well that evening nvidia had earnings and the basically they traded down after hours to around 152 which is ironically the prior low that they traded around the last after hours and um, basically in sympathy you know AMD's earnings report was a lot better than the videos um, but they were trading down in sympathy but luckily I was like an option so I was like okay well if, if, if the video holds 152 maybe we can see a trade back up and that's why I was posting you know is this an Nvidia buying opportunity and basically for me I was wanted to be more exposed to AMD since it's a cheaper stock and plus it had a better earnings report. So that's what that was like my whole logic for the trade and it was a very low risk. These options are trading like at 60 cents on Thursday. Well, some of them were, I think I paid 60 cents, 100, I think I paid 60 cents a buck and like a buck 25 for the different strikes or whatever. And I sold the next morning at I believe $98. 96 yeah 98 yeah no, 96 is my first uh, exit and then it ended up closing at 98 and then I held it again uh, to 104 and I can't and I cashed them all out I could have held it a little bit more because I had something that expired today um, but yeah I cashed them all out wasn't interested in taking assignment of any stock or anything like that just because I know where we are in the market and um, I would we'd much rather be selling cover calls than taking assignment of stock. Can't talk about the market without talking about Apple. 
So Apple, same thing. Uh, we got a high today of 150.66. 150 has been uh, the line in the sand on Apple for the last, say, month or so. Uh, ever since it, you know, it broke down from the 168, 167 level, it's been struggling. And Apple is pretty much like the entire like mega cap market. Um, so, you know, Tesla's in there, Facebook's in there. Well, actually, Facebook's not in there anymore, but it used to be. Uh, Facebook, Netflix used to be in there, but they got beat up so bad that they're not in there anymore in terms of like mega caps. I guess they still are, like in terms of like if you think about like a blue chip, but the actual caps have come down quite a bit uh, compared to their historical highs. And um, but Apple itself, uh, you know, it's not really that far, far off from its all-time high. Uh, you know, it's at 150 all-time highs, you know, 30 bucks away. You know, it's a huge company. I really don't see a lot of unwinding in Apple so far. And that kind of is what scares me. Um, the fact that I don't see a huge unwind in Apple yet. I mean, like we're honestly back testing the breakdown right here. This pivot low, like that that's, that's, that's giving me like balls to really want to go short because you can get a nice level uh, you can really get a nice trade against that. Like if he comes back in there and it confirms, like meaning that it closes two consecutive days above that prior low, then you know you would probably want to move out because you could start at that point. Your structure is starting to generate a new pattern and you're not within trend anymore. Uh, but so far, uh, we're still downtrend. Like we we got the two higher highs. Um, on Apple, so Friday, Thursday, and Friday, and then we obviously have today when we came up Pinocchio back into that level. That was your short entry, um, and like I said, we we'll have to close above today's high for two consecutive closes for me to move out of that trade, or it would have to give me a really hard like stop out against like maybe these pivots over here. I would say probably. 156 157 158 this depends on the price action how it is in there if the buyers are really strong in the tape and you'll learn that from from experience uh, but those are kind of like what i was looking at in terms of trading apple uh i personally believe you should take trades a day at a time and it's based upon what we see today and based upon a daily chart i would i would want to fade this against uh 151 152 definitely and if you did you would have caught i believe you would have caught a little bit of some profit intraday here give me one second so yeah oh yeah intraday we got up to 150 yeah 150 60 you could have faded that every time and caught 50 cents so that's apple um talk about the cues cues pretty much same thing as the spies um they're just you know technically a little bit weaker uh same same pattern setup that you can see that they closed weaker than the spies today uh, i'm expecting the cues to make new lows for on the year i'm not sure when but i know they're coming and i'll change my position if the cues get above 330 IWM, uh, I bought some puts on these today. Looking for 182 tomorrow. Uh, IWM was the weakest index today. Typically, when an IWM is the weakest, it is the leading index. So if if IWM is leading to the upside and the spies are you know lagging, the spies probably going to pay cut, pay catch up. That happened on Thursday and Friday. That was kind of like your tip off that you know the market might want to go long. IWM was strong. Uh, early while the spies and the queues lag so keep that in mind let's talk about google same thing here uh google's actually has relative strength in the market not a lot of people trade it but it's just good to use for uh, a gauge of you know market sentiment and what's going on 
Tesla's, you know, everybody's baby. Um, I don't like it. Granted, yeah, we got, you know, similar price action to like how the index is looking and everything. But when you look at the weekly chart, it just doesn't really look all that great. Um, we almost had a three week downturn in the, in the in Tesla. And I would have preferred to see, to see that over what it did. Because now, uh, basically, you get, you know, the, the decline, and then you kind of like this right back into the sell position. So you can look at this as a negative two plus one. That's what I call it. Uh, so a negative two plus one uh, sell position, or you can get a. Sometimes you get a plus two minus one sell position, a buy position. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Well, it's not one on, t on a weekly chart. Give me one second here. Plus two, minus one. Huh. Well, Tesla sucks. It's not really a lot of those in there. Well, given the market this year. But that is a setup that you can typically use. It's called a, a plus two minus one or, or a minus one plus two. It's based upon the interval of three. A lot of times markets uh, tend to move in threes in terms of like waves. They'll push three times during the day. If the day is trending, they'll you know test three or four times during the day if the day is ranging. Um, and also, you'll see a lot of uh, three-day like moves uh, overall. The market's trending and move that way for three days. And on the third day, you might want to put a pivot in. Uh, you see that a lot. Like we, we see that on Tesla here. Uh, we got a three-day move. One, two, three. Put a pivot in. That's on a daily. And if I show it to you on a weekly, you got a three-week move. Put a pivot in. So, well. Or you can look at it as one, two, three. That was, you know, red at one point and then you recovered. So, um, but yeah, just keep these type of things in mind. We're going to take it a day at a time on the market. I, uh, I personally think the market is, you know, just within a, the context of a bear market rally. How high can we go? I'm willing to give it to around like, you know, 4,300 um, before I really want to change positions on that. And I just don't really see how. We're going to get above that. It might, you know, want to chop around, bait people, you know, get some discussion going, maybe draw the VIX down a little bit uh, before one is to make another move. But, I mean, macro speaking, nothing's really changed. So what are we really going to do as far as, you know, the market goes? The market's pretty much crashed in growth names. The only thing keeping this thing up is mega caps. So... Uh, once the mega caps start getting liquidated, then, you know, you'll start seeing a lot of uh, the recessionary talk. And we haven't had a lot of that yet. And it's, it's supposed to come. So keep your heads up. Keep your eyes out. Trade, trade smart. Trade accordingly. Manage your risk. That's David the Trader signing off.